I recently bought this uh, low-cost clamp-on current meter from eBay. This was about $70 shipped, and uh, it doesn't even really have a, a brand on it. The model number is CP06. And uh, if you've shopped for one of these clamp-on current probes before, you, you've probably noticed that uh, the good ones are extremely expensive. Uh, some are like over $1,000, a tech clamp-on current probe that's capable of high-frequency measurement. So in this video, I'm just going to try to do some basic tests on this just to characterize it and see if it's, if it's even worth the $70. It came with uh, this sort of a cable with a BNC on one end, and the other end had uh, banana plugs to, that go into the current probe's uh, sockets there. Unfortunately, this was totally broken. It was actually open from the pin in the BNC connector to the, to the banana uh, connector. So I cut that up and just made a, a makeshift one myself. And I currently have the probe connected to uh, the tech scope here, which is just making a voltage measurement. Uh, I, I've been kind of stalling on buying a second multimeter. Uh, there's too many choices, so I haven't picked one yet. So I just have this one multimeter, and uh, I'm going to use the scope today to do the, the voltage measurement. The probe also came with this cheesy case, and it also came with a uh, banana to banana plug so that you can connect the probe to a multimeter. And that actually works pretty well. These aren't terrible. So these probes are often rated uh, either AC or DC, and some are built uh, differently. The AC probes uh, sometimes use a transformer here to couple the uh, current flowing through the the sensing hole into the circuitry, and the DC probes often use a Hall effect sensor. So the problem with the Hall effect sensors is that they're sensitive to, you know, outside magnetic fields, even the Earth's magnetic field if you're measuring small currents. So the DC probes all have a zeroing button or a zeroing dial so that you can uh, make sure to get a zero reading before actually measuring the current that you want to measure. So let's try it. I'm going to uh, hook this over this wire here, and then disconnect the circuit so we know that no current is flowing. I'm going to press the zero button. And we've got a measurement of like negative two millivolts, which is well within the oscilloscope's uh, noise range there. And I'll connect this back up. And on my power supply, I'm just going to pick some arbitrary value. So the meter shows we've got uh, 39 milliamps. And lo and behold, 30.038386 millivolts on the scope, which indicates uh, a, a good agreement between the, the probe and the, and the meter here. So on its lowest scale, 400 milliamp scale, it's one millivolt per milliamp. So let's crank the power up a little bit. Now we've got 96 milliamps uh, flowing and Perfect agreement there, 96 millivolts. Let's keep going. I actually haven't done this test, by the way, so you're seeing the results the first time that I am. 218 over here, 224 there. Uh, 377. This one's starting to come up a little bit. Now it's reading 390 over here, so it's a little high. to switch into a higher range on the multimeter pretty soon. But, so we've got 377 and 390, so it's reading just a touch high. Um, let's, uh, let me switch this into the higher range. And I will also switch the probe here, and I'll, I'll re-zero it out too, just to be fair on it. So zero it in the new range. And Crank it up a little bit. Okay, so we got 0.52 amps here. Got 0.5 or 49 there, good. Okay, about two amps here, yeah. 0.2 of a volt there, looks good. I'm actually not using a load resistor. I mean, basically, the load resistor is the meter itself. And the, uh, the power supply is only putting out half a volt. I mean, it's, there's very little power dissipation. 
Um, so let's see what we got here, 3.46, we got 0.344, so still pretty close. I'll just round out this range here. 3.99 and 0.398, so DC accuracy is looking good. Let's, let's try the next uh, scale up. It has three ranges, 400 milliamps, 4 amps, and 40 amps. And the sensitivity is 1 millivolt per milliamp in the, in the highest sensitivity range, 100 millivolts per amp in the medium range, and 10 millivolts per amp in the highest range, which is where we are now. But that's pretty good. I mean, I think that's, that's actually reasonable accuracy. So let's uh, move up to uh, measuring AC. Okay, here's my setup for measuring uh, AC current. Um, and I'm going to use the, the kilowatt meter to measure uh, AC voltage coming in through the line. And the meter is set up to measure uh, voltage, AC voltage coming out of the probe. So I'll press the zero button, hold it down for a while, and let it back up. And this is a 40 watt plain old incandescent bulb, and we've got 0.3 amps on the uh, kilowatt meter and 0.027. This is on the 4 amp range, so that's pretty good. That's not bad. Try a bigger bulb. This is a 75 watt bulb. Uh, 0.64 on the kilowatt and 0.6 on the uh, probe there. Pretty good, you know, not bad. Now just for laughs, let's put in a compact fluorescent. So this, those incandescent bulbs are just purely resistive loads, but this compact fluorescent is not. So let's see what happens with that. Yeah, so now we've got interesting stuff going on. The kilowatt meter shows 0.25, but we're only getting 0.013 on the, the uh, or I mean, it's multiplied by 10 to get amps because it's in the scale there. So 0.24 versus 0.13. Uh, because the waveform, the current waveform of this CFL light is not um, uh, sinusoidal. It's, it's wacky. So let's hook the uh, probe up to the scope, which is really what this thing is useful for. I mean, if you just wanted to know what the value was, you could use one of those Tech clamp-on meters that just has a readout right on the meter. The whole point of getting a current probe is to actually analyze the current waveform on a, an oscilloscope. So let's hook it up. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, waveform that's coming out of this current probe. In this setup, I've got my isolation transformer back here. I've got a 15 ohm resistor in the circuit, and I'm measuring the voltage across that 15 ohm resistor uh, to get the actual current measurement, what we're going to use as a reference. And then the current probe is clamped onto uh, on the other side of the line there. So uh, let's take a look at the scope. And I'm not really too concerned about exact values here. I'm mostly interested in the, in the shape of the waveform for this test. So as you can see, very similar. I, I don't see any um, differences in the shape of the waveform there. So one, I don't even know. I think it's, this one's a little bit noisier than this trace. So this, this is the, um, the current probe. OK, let me switch to uh, the compact fluorescent light. Okay, so now we're looking at that compact fluorescent bulb, and looks like a very nice matchup of the waveform again. Let's see here. Yeah, so as you can see, the, uh, the current probe has an interesting sort of uh, pattern to it. It's not noise, it's actually interference. It looks like there's maybe a power supply. Uh, it uses a switching power supply that has a, a bit of ripple to it, and so there's fuzz in the output. Okay, for this setup, I'm using this uh, capacitive discharge system that I built. And um, I've got my one milliohm uh, shunt here measured on channel one on the scope. And I've also got the, the current probe set to its 40 amp range clamped onto the same shunt where the current is going through. So if we take a look at the scope, channel one is, is the actual current, the shunt and it's 200 millivolts per division, which translates to 200 amps per division. And um, the horizontal scale is, what was it, 0.1 millisecond per division. 
Now the bottom trace, channel 2, is what's coming out of the current probe, and as you can see, there's not much there. The scale is 2 volts per division, and the probe is set on its highest scale, which means you get 10 millivolts per amp, so it should be comparable scales here. It should be 200 amps per division for each uh, trace. Uh, and as you can see, there's really nothing going on. It, it completely missed the waveform, so the, the um, frequency response of this current probe is not high enough to detect a uh, 100 microsecond pulse, which is not surprising. I mean, it's, it's really not meant for that. I think they even spec the frequency response at something like 2 kilohertz or 5 kilohertz or something in that range. But I was kind of curious to see what it would pick up, if anything. The answer is not much. So overall, I, you know, I suppose it's worth $70. It, it's good at measuring DC um, and low frequency AC, and it's good enough to see the waveform for 60 hertz stuff, which is probably one of the major uses for this. Um, if you're curious how nonlinear your, your device is, or if you're, if you're building a power supply and you want to know uh, what the current waveform looks like, this is, this is pretty good for that. And the scales all seem to work. Overall, the construction is pretty cheesy. Um, you know, it's not absolutely terrible, but it's, it's definitely cheesy. Uh, but then again, this is $70, and the... I don't know what the next comparable probe would cost, but as, as if you scan eBay, I mean, they're well into the hundreds of dollars, and, and some are over a thousand. So if budget's an issue, um, this looks like the way to go. Okay, I hope that was helpful. See you next time. Bye.